Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. We've been talking a lot about the microbiome lately. I've actually wrote my new book, Brain Maker, about the microbiome. And what is really so compelling about the microbiome is the vast amount of information uh, that it contains. You know, 99% uh, of the DNA within our bodies is actually bacterial. It's actually contained in those bacteria that live within us, that live on us, as well as, as other organisms. I recently had the uh, great uh, pleasure to visit uh, Dr. Larry Smarr. Dr. Smarr is now at the University of California in San Diego. And let me take you on um, a little tour of uh, a little ex my experiences with uh, Dr. Smarr. So at the University of California, San Diego, as mentioned, I had the uh, great uh, pleasure of meeting with this individual. Uh, Dr. Larry Smarr. Now, Dr. Smarr is um, an actually trained as an astrophysicist. He has uh, worked with NASA for decades. He's been an advisor to uh, multiple uh, presidents. And interestingly enough, uh, his area of expertise is uh, using computers to basically look at data. He is one of the leaders in the world, perhaps, uh, in, in terms of uh, ability to understand what it means to uh, harvest data, how it is, uh, how to uh, rather uh, use technology to, use, to crunch data. And he really has access to some of the most powerful computing uh, equipment uh, uh, infrastructure really on the planet. But what really is so exciting about uh, Dr. Smarr is he has turned his uh, incredible ability to uh, utilize computer technology to analyze data on himself. Uh, he has been diagnosed, this is a matter of public record, with a form of bowel inflammation, a form of colitis. And what uh, Dr. Smarr has done is collected vast amounts of data on himself, and as I'll show you in just a moment, uh, looking at data in terms of other people as well. Now behind him, over his shoulder, uh, is what he calls the wall. And I'll, tell you, I'll show you a closer picture of the wall. Uh, the wall looks at data. He presents data. In this case, uh, this is data taken from himself, looking at multiple uh, biometric uh, data sets, looking at various laboratory studies. Let me just zoom in, and you'll see what it is that uh, he's demonstrating. All kinds of uh, biometric analyses, including things like C-reactive protein, which you see in the lower left of your screen, a marker of inflammation, uh, hemoglobin, the uh, uh, protein within the blood cells that binds oxygen, uh, cholesterol markers, fat markers, other blood markers, uh, etc. And he's looking at this data over time. But more intriguing is his analysis of his microbiome. He has uh, repeatedly sent samples of his stool uh, to uh, researchers who are looking at the stool specimens in terms of the array of bacteria the various species of bacteria and the quantities of those particular species. And what he's done since he has colitis is he has uh, looked, as you see in this magnified view, at uh, the array of different uh, organisms. In this case, um, the blue rec represents a large group of organisms found in most of us called Firmicutes, whereas the red represents Bacterioidetes. And you'll see that the Crohn's patients above the ulcerative colitis patients in the second column, uh, his analysis in the third column, and, the, and general uh, population uh, in the fourth column, all have really remarkable different uh, levels and ratios of these organisms. Uh, when you look at a large group of individuals uh, with the Firmicutes being in blue and the Bacterioidetes being in red, you see at casual inspection that most people have lots of bacterioidetes and few firmicutes, but when you look uh, at higher magnification, you see, in fact, great differences between individuals. Each of these panels represents the stool analysis of the particular species in each individual, and as you'll notice, there are, in fact, dramatic differences. So, the point is that we are just at the very, very beginning of understanding uh, how these uh, incredible differences are arrayed in individual people. 
how these differences may correlate to specific disease processes. And ultimately, this hopefully will open the door uh, to techniques to actually manipulate the microbiome, manipulate the levels of various species of bacteria uh, to allow improvements in people uh, suffering from various uh, diseases. I'd like to end this segment by using a, by looking at a very interesting quote from Dr. Julian Davies, uh, a microbiologist, immunologist at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, who stated that once the diversity of the microbial world is cataloged, it will make astronomy look like a pitiful science. Well, I would say that um, perhaps those are harsh words uh, if they were directed at the field of uh, cosmology, uh, but nonetheless, you know, uh, Dr. Smarr is an astrophysicist. And, you know, if you think it's unusual for me as a neurologist to be so involved in looking at the, at the human microbiome, and I'm sure to many people it still seems a little unusual, think of the fact that this incredibly gifted astrophysicist has now taken it upon himself to dedicate himself and incredible computing power uh, available to him to exploring this vast data set that characterizes the variations in the human microbiome. We are about to see a transformation in our understanding of human health and physiology. And part of the reason this transformation is taking place is because of the dedication of individuals like Dr. Larry Smarr. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter.